was thinking after listening to a lot of stuff online, listening to a lot of podcasts, and I kept finding myself saying, you know, I'm not really feeling this, and it wasn't because the content wasn't good. Mm-mm, that wasn't it. It wasn't because the, the folks couldn't help me. It was I wasn't running across people with my same motivation. Because I was having this conversation with a client. And this is the big thing. This episode of the Hustlers Kung Fu Show was brought to you by Audible, where you can pick one of 180,000 books if you take advantage of the free trial, which the link is the first link below. And if you're classy, I have some extra stuff for you. When you hear of creating a company, invariably you hear about creating an exit strategy, about building something really, really, really quick, then getting the hell on. That's never really been my strategy. It's not something I thought about. I've thought about, well, you know, the next 10 years, next 20 years, next 30 years, what can I do? How can I build this? But the thing is, I haven't been acting like that. That's been the problem. I haven't been acting like that because I was just sitting there like, what are you doing? And I think that many of you are caught up in ramp up itis where you want to build some quick as possible, get to a certain point, sell it or scale it and cash out on the IPO. Nothing wrong with that stuff. Nothing wrong with it at all, but that's just not the way that I wanted to roll. And I think it creates this mania of people who are comparing themselves to unicorns. Like I've said this before, and I've said it many, many times before. Most of us are not going to become million, uh, billionaires. And people like take that as, well, you know, you're not being encouraging. You're not really taking care of your tribe. You're not, no, no, no. I'm, I am taking care of the tribe. I'm telling you the fucking truth. Because if you look at it like that, comparing yourself to a unicorn, going back when I first started on YouTube and I would see all these people who were doing uh, social commentary type videos or beauty vloggers and I would compare and contrast myself to them when I was comparing myself to a unicorn. Unicorns are supposed to be special. They're supposed to do a lot of unique and wonderful things because they're unicorns. Now, many people, because I put in the video up before this one, talking about apprenticeship, about putting together a business, about the durability and the power of time. And many people are not really invested in that train of thought, not trying to hear it. It's like J.G. Wentworth, I gotta get my money now. I gotta do this now. I know some people feel that they may not be around in 10, 20 years, so they trying to, what is that, YOLO? You only live once, get as much as you can, but the math on that is contrary. And when I say the math, if you notice how many 80-some-year-old, 90-some-year-old people we've seen to have around now, due to medical advancements, due to people eating better, folks are living longer. So unless something unfortunate happens, chances are you're going to be around. Chances are. So why not put together a plan for your life that's predicated on some sanity? Because I'm, I'm having this video and I'm asking you this. Are you trying to get rich fast to impress someone? Or are you trying to get rich fast because you don't think you're going to be around? Or you don't even know what you're trying to do? Just put that in the comments. Just throw that in the comments. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to build? What are you trying to create? If anything, because I sat down and I looked at my goals. I looked at my plans. And I realized that my behavior was in direct contradiction to what I was trying to achieve. Because I was on this uh, push, 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 ramp up, ramp up, ramp up. And that's not really the whole thing. I've never really been like that. I was like, 
believe in working hard. And, you know, based upon the fact that, you know, I was just pretty much not doing much for three years when the book was selling well, I was just enjoying life. So as I look back and I look at my behavior and I look at things that I've said, things that I have uh, put out, I just want to ask you, what is your motivation for building your business? What is your motivation? Because I know that I've lost a lot of people and I'm cool with that because we've changed the message and that's to be expected. Because I don't want to work with anybody with this get rich quick mentality. Because it's like working with a kid who wants a cookie. They see the cookies on the counter. They're in the jar. They know the cookies are there. And they're like, why can I have a cookie? Well, it's not time to have a cookie. Well, why? I want a cookie because it's going to mess up your dinner. Uh, why? I want a cookie. And then when you turn your back, they go in there and get the cookies. And then later on, when they're all up with a bellyache and crying and farting all over the place then they like why didn't you try to stop me i did you didn't listen you didn't listen so part of the whole thing is about creating brands about creating something that is remarkable or something different as you can see it's been a lot of changes on the channel and we're pretty much kind of toward the end of that not much else is going to change for the foreseeable future. I've done a lot of experimentation. I've gotten a great deal of feedback. And now I have the information for a better tool to help you be more successful. Because, see, this is the thing. Here's the truth. And I've said this for years. You are going to be the sum of your daily activities. You're not going to be the sum of what you did this weekend. You're not going to be the sum of that one good week. You're going to be the sum of your daily activities. You're going to be a accumulation of what you do on the regular. There's this book that I'm reading. You can use your Audible trial, get it, or if not, just go ahead and get it. It's called The Power of Habit. And that's something that is very much in line with what I'm doing and how I have lived. Because I even wrote a you know a post about it called you know fuck willpower. Habits are better because habits define you. They dictate you know they're very comfortable. There's a certain thing that happens when you have a good habit or a bad habit. But check it out. It's called the power of habit. And what I'm going to do now with the smaller tribe is lead people to build brands and to build companies see talking to someone who doesn't feel that they're going to be around or talking to someone who feels that they can't do a certain thing you are talking to you're speaking on deaf ears that's the reason for all this speed because like I said I just feel that if you apply yourself the right way with the right level of energy and enthusiasm, you're going to build your business. But more than likely, it's not going to happen in a matter of weeks or months. It's going to take a few years. That's the sticking point for many people. I don't care how many ways I say it. Folks can just kind of lose it. And that's been reflected in my consults because... When I talk to someone who has a business or someone who's super prepared to start a business, the results are just different versus talking to someone who's in that, I don't know what I want to do except I want to make some money. I kind of have this idea, but I'm not sure. Um, frequently, a lot of these times, these people haven't validated their ideas. They haven't gotten into the marketplace. They haven't really um, put together some stuff. But the new thing is, and you know, I got a question about it because how dare I <laughs> have an application process? But the thing is, that's actually for your benefit. Because let's just be real. If you have no money, and I'm talking about your life is running on fumes, and your motivation to start the business is to change your circumstances, which is noble and makes sense, but you don't have the tools, baby boy and baby girl. You don't have the tools. 
And I'm talking about you don't even have to be rich. You just have to be stable enough where you can push on something for a few years. And now a lot of people are just kind of in that ass out stage. Um, one thing that I see that's going to happen is many people who have good jobs right now, they're in trouble and they don't know it. And it's not because they're not going to work. It's not because their skill sets are defunct. It's just technology is pushing on the job market like nothing has happened before. Uh, many of the things that I predicted have happened. I thought they were going to happen eight, nine, ten years from now. They're happening. They have in other countries robots who can serve food. It's in this country. I don't know how widespread it's going to be, but that is going to be a reality because of the economic benefit that it creates for those people who own those companies. It's just going to be um, insane. So what you do is coming. It's just going to be you, you could be in trouble. I mean, everybody should be sleeping scared <laughs> because that's the future. But if you want to really understand how to build something I want you to sit down and actually see your life 40, 50 years in the future. Yeah, I know that's going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because if you're not a person who has ever planned anything, then those who plan, the shit fucks with you. Because let me give you an example. Recently on my personal Facebook page, I put up my, a goal board which I've been erasing stuff. It's completely erased now, but I had to erase half of it because I had done half, then I erased everything else, then I readjusted my goals. And it, it was 2013 that I created that board. It took me until 2015 to get 90% of that stuff done. Now, when I tell you, know, when you look at people like, you know, tell them that, you know, some of this stuff is gonna take much longer than you want, but if you stay with it, and you understand the power of time. Because this is the thing. I look at everybody that was quote my quote unquote my competition in, in the space. Not too many of them are left. And two years from now, shit, let's just go ahead and say a year from now, a lot of the people that are in that space right now, they're gonna be gone. Because this is something that I've noticed because I study YouTube and YouTubers is many people start to run out of content and this is how you can tell if they're frequently posting then all of a sudden you start to see these one week two week three week gaps because they're running out of ideals uh, shit's getting a little dicey and part of that is when you do something strictly because it's popular you're not vested you don't have this huge repository of experiences to relate and to share. I mean, I was doing like three or four videos a day about storage auctions. I could probably sit down now and do at least one a day for the next two years if I started again. But that's not my uh, direction in life. But part of time and durability and apprenticeship is dedicating yourself to something that's bigger than you. Because as long as it's like uh, get a house, get a nice car, that simple shit, that's really not a lot of motivation. It just really isn't for mo for me. I'm gonna say that's just not a lot of motivation for me. I'll speak for myself. If you want to really, really motivate yourself, you have to create goals and projections of stuff so scary that when you write them on the paper, you're like, ooh, you scare your damn self. Yeah, if your shit's not like scaring you or make you tremble, it's too small. And if it's too small, you're not gonna get really far because this is what happens to me. Just go back to the bulletin board. A lot of that stuff was too small. And this is, this is how I operate and maybe you operate this way too. Typically, you do what you have to do, and if you're exceptional, you do more than you have to do. So I typically do more than I have to do a little bit. Now, if I wanted to be 
much further along, I would have had three to four times as much information on that board, which is what's happening now because I realigned everything, I put it back, and then I said, this is the five year plan, and this is the 10 year aspect, and this is the 15 year aspect, and this is the 20 year aspect, and I wrote down some shit that made me go, oh Lord, are you insane? But it scared me and it also motivated me. It, it scared me. But the thing is, I don't have to do this next month. I don't have a board of directors to answer to. So I can take the time to put this on. Because I'll tell you, if you notice, a lot of stuff has changed. A lot of things I've done. I've actually, I've had people offer me sponsorships for years. I never took them. Uh, the Audible thing, I was just like, well, that really dovetails into what I already do. I've recommended books for years. That's just a part of who I am and how I get down. So it made sense because it is in line. It's in alignment with who I am as a person. So it's not really that hard because I mean, I've, like I said, I've been a Audible subscriber for seven years now. So that works. And then you might see something else because someone else has offered me some. I'm still pondering it. But now that there's a longer game plan because really I mean honestly this was the game plan in 2009 write a storage auction book sell it to a publishing company get 50 70 thousand then take a year and write the great American novel didn't happen I'm glad it didn't happen so now it's like okay I'm forced to really evaluate what I'm doing I am forced because part of being able to hustle in any environment you know you'll be okay so you're not like overly concerned like the average person because let's just say I, I had to stop doing the internet thing for some reason wouldn't like it because I like the internet thing but I can make a living purely off Craigslist I know exactly what to do so I don't have that what the fuck will I do if this doesn't work thing I have that Hmm, I wonder how lovely this will be if it does work because there's other skill sets in the arsenal that will pay me if needed and you know and that's the reason I'm having this conversation with you is because sometimes when I speak to you I forget that I have some very unusual circumstances in life just some unusual circumstances and I think that I have to do a better job of getting deeper with the explanations, uh, getting deeper with the content, and getting deeper with the answers because what will happen is someone will want to, they'll see me and then they'll go like, well, hey, he's just like me. If he's doing that, and I can do that. And that's inspiring and that's a good thing. But the problem is, there are people who are thinking that this has happened much sooner than it really did because I had a friend that said, you know, man, I was in the grocery store and I was just thinking about you. And I remember you said, you, I've been doing this for six years. That's the realization because right now, let's say everybody's talking about YouTube is swamped. YouTube is crowded if you count mediocre bullshit content as relevant. If you put that in the relevant bucket, yeah, it's swamped. But if you go in that, the shit is just outstanding, over the top, super relevant, timeless, evergreen. No, there's so much room for that. <laughs> there's so much room for that. So it's not really tapped out, not even close. Recently, YouTube put out this article that the next decade, they see great growth. And I'm going to tell you why. You're going to be able to do stuff on YouTube like you could do with Netflix. There's gonna be sponsored content. There's gonna be people who are gonna create shows. There, there's all of this wonderful stuff that's coming. And if you're on that, I gotta get it now tip, you, you, you're not gonna position yourself for the things that are gonna happen in the future. Because, you know, everyone's on me about Periscope. Like I went in, I signed up for the app, and I'm like, okay. Is that in alignment with my goals? Because I've seen some people lose their minds because they've gotten some quick money. You can't make money with Periscope. You can't. 
but is that my play? Is that what I want to do? And then when I look at the five-year plan, 10-year, it, like, it doesn't really fit in there because a lot of that stuff is the new flavor of the month. Uh, someone, I put out that, you know, I've got this plan for YouTube and it says bold. It's like YouTube, YouTube's going to disappear. YouTube's not going anywhere because YouTube is easy media. Newspapers did not disappear. Newspapers matriculated into an online format. Books did not disappear. Books have matriculated into a digital format. Plus, in France and other countries, the hard copies sell just as well. So books haven't gone anywhere. What you have to understand is a lot of these things don't disappear. They transform. That's what's going to happen. But if you are, let's just say, you were a open-minded writer. Because one of the things that I found to be true with the writers that I knew was a lot of them were fucking closed-minded. Because in 2009, I don't know how many people I tried to get a YouTube channel. They didn't want to hear it because what they were doing was working. So there was no reason to do something else. But... If you were a writer with an open mind, like uh, Pulp Fiction writers, they wrote so much that a lot of those guys got rich during the Great Depression. And it, it's just a matter of you really positioning yourself for the future as well as enjoying today, which gets back to figuring out what you really like to do or what you can do well. Even if you don't like it, if you can do it well and you start to get results and you start to get accolades and pats on the back, all of a sudden, you like that shit. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is cool. I like this. And it becomes super easy to do. And the passion can come from that because I didn't have a passion for YouTube, but I love the results and that's why I kept doing it. But part of this is going back to the concept of time going back to the concept of if you stay with something and you stick with it and you keep building and building and building it's going to pay off but when is it going to pay off i don't know how is it going to pay off i don't know which is a lot of scary stuff and that's why if you're a young person you are not married you don't have any kids do what i'm doing now if you're in 16, you're in high school, you want to start a, a newspaper, start it. You want to write a book, write it. You want to do a travel blog, figure that shit out. Do it because the time that you have as a young person going into your young adulthood that you're free can never, ever be replaced. You can never replace it. I remember we were in Korea and this was a military trip. But I went to Vance Party because it got me out of uh, off base and I got to have fun. Because, like, if you know, there's a lot of downtime with a Vance Party and, you know, packing up stuff. Once you do the stuff, you're just kind of sitting around. So that's how I was back in the day. I don't know how it is in the military now. And I remember I was there. Then this guy comes in. The NCO comes in. It's like, hey, I need six people to go with the chaplain. I'm like, woo, I'll go. Next thing I know, we're talking to Korean teachers for two days hanging out, having nice lunch. That's just an experience that's just, you can't replicate that stuff when you get older and then you wanna kinda of like go back and do your youth. Cause I see a lot of that. I see a lot of that um, with people like, hey, you know, uh, what was that? 50, 20, 30, the new 50, something like that. Some bullshit like that. Reality is, instead of trying to go back and recapture some shit, Make your time that you're that age as special and remarkable as you can so you don't have to worry about trying to go back in time because you can't until we build time machines, which I do believe are going to happen. But when you have the courage to start to define some stuff, because I'm going to just kind of give you some, some tips of what's coming. I was going to do all these Facebook pages, but once again, I went back to the five-year plan. And I was like, okay. This is not really in alignment. So it went out. Now there's only one Facebook page and there's only gonna be one for the foreseeable future, future unless the business or the numbers dictate I need to do another one because I'm just gonna funnel everything through there. Hence creating the brand. 
and there's, there's going to be some wild shit that's coming, very, very wild. But part of the reason I'm doing that is I'm looking to be better positioned to take advantage of things I know that are coming in, in terms of technology. Things that are coming. Things that are just going to be over-the-top awesome, over-the-top great, just beyond remarkable. This stuff is coming. But for those of you who don't really understand the power of time, if you're just kind of like doing this and moving over here, doing that, doing this, because... I'm seeing people, and even folks who kind of come up fast, there's still like a two-year period even on YouTube, even with the younger folks. And for someone who's 16, two years is an eternity. That's a long time, because you know your perspective's not that deep. But if you're 30-some years old, or some other stuff, then you should really, really think about applying yourself and start asking yourself questions like this. Will I be happy doing this five years from now? Will I be happy doing this 10 years from now? If you're single, is because this is the reason you do this. And this is something that I put in my course, Disruptive Mating. I've defined how I want my life to be when there was no woman in it. So when a woman did come in, she had to fit into my life, if that makes sense. She had to fit into, I didn't have to go rearrange anything. She didn't have to rearrange anything. It's because I had thought about how I wanted to have a certain kind of relationship. So when she came into the scene, I was like, ah, check, 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 check. Oh, shit. Damn. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, we're going we gonna, to we gonna do some things here. And that comes from sitting around and just thinking about it because some of you will never get married. Some of you never want to be married. Some of you shouldn't be married. Some of you are never going to have kids. Some of you shouldn't have kids. If you sit down and really, really, really think about that now, deal with that now. Think about that from an honest place. Now you'll just be better positioned to take advantage of the wonderful future that's coming because a lot of stuff that's happening online it's just it makes you tingle it makes you just tingle so that's what's going down you're going to see a lot of this stuff change well I'm not going to see a lot of stuff change up you're going to see a different level of content you're going to see deeper analysis and you will not see me trend hopping I picked YouTube for a reason and I'm glad I picked it and I've changed up some stuff with Facebook which is, you know, I've opened up the group to the public because there's some different stuff that's going on with that. But when you look long term, it's amazing how clear things can become. But when you're looking at stuff like this right, right here, right here in your face, you're blinded by a lot of stuff. Ambition, poor data, a lot of things. So just some stuff for you to think about. So if you love this video, and you should, be sure to go below the video and check out what I have for you. There's some free stuff. There's some cool stuff. There's some motivating stuff. Just go down there, look around, check it out. And if nothing else, be sure to join the Facebook group because it's about to be really, really interesting in there. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you in the next video.